Hello super user, so in this lesson we're going to look at overhauling the transposition function in Finale. My guess is that if you do anything with composing, arranging, or even orchestrating music, you probably use this tool on a daily basis, so we're going to make it much simpler and easier to use. That way all you need is the keyboard, you don't have to mess around with any dialog boxes. In case you don't know exactly what I'm talking about, I'm talking about this transpose tool that you can get by either right clicking or you can come up here to utilities transpose and it allows you to transpose anything you want at all of these different intervals either up or down so let's get started as you can imagine we're going to want to create a palette for this and so we're going to create a new palette over here i'm going to call this finale intervals because we're going to eventually add other things into here but they're all going to be based off of intervals available on all applications, just make it available in Finale. Always activated, we want to change that to show a palette for one action one. And for this action, we're going to use Control W. That's going to be the hotkey. And now we can go ahead and start creating the macros. So the first one we want to do over here is to open up the transposition dialog box. So we're going to call this transposition, new trigger, new trigger, and we're going to call this C. Why C? It makes sense to me. Uh, new action, we're going to do a menu item. We can get to the transpose function via utilities transpose. Let's come over here to finale, utilities, transpose. And so this will pop up the transposition dialog box. So to show you what I mean, once we make the selection, control W to open up the palette and C to open up the transposition dialog box. Nice and simple. Now once we do that, I want to make sure that chromatically is automatically checked. So we're going to then after this, we're going to do a button press. So we're going to do press a button and chromatically like that. So now every time we open up the transposition tool, it'll automatically select chromatically as the button. And so now let's just make a several more macros to deal with all the functions. So new macro, and we're going to call this down because it's going to it's going to check the box for the interval to go down. Type in D, new action, press a button, down. Then we could do the same thing with up. So we're going to call this up. I use E for this because E is right above D. So it's almost like up and down. You could use U. That just for me requires the other hand. So I only use E for this, for up. And so now if we go back to the transposition tool and we do this, we should be able to use E and D to go up and down. Except for there appears to be a problem. Why might that be? Well, it actually comes back to how we define this palette and one of the reasons why I want to use this example. Because the palette actually says, show the palette for one action when we press this key press. So we're actually going to, instead of show it for one action, we want to just show or hide the palette one. What this will do is it'll allow us to do multiple macros within this group at once without hiding the palette. So if we cancel out of here quickly, control W for the palette, and now C to open up the transposition dialog box. And now we should be able to use E and D to go up and down. And so once we've solved that problem, let's keep going back through here. So we have another one for preserve notes. I use this as T for preserve. It makes sense to me. You can change this to whatever you want. And then type in preserve original notes because that's what the button is called. So if we come back over here, we can use T to toggle the preserve button on and off. So again, we have right now up and down like that and T to preserve things and change that on and off. Now we just have to select the interval. So these are gonna be a bit more of a complicated macro, but we can work with it. So new macro, and we're gonna start with a major second, right? And for the new trigger, the hockey trigger, we're gonna do two because two makes sense for major second. Now when we do this, we want it to basically select this dialog box, move to where it says major second, and then stop there. However, there's a bit of a challenge with Keyboard Maestro. You can't actually select drop-down menus in Keyboard Maestro. There isn't like press a button interval to get here, or choose major second from this drop-down menu. We have to get a bit clever. So what we're going to do is we're going to move the mouse over here and click the drop-down menu. And then we actually want to type, because you can actually move around here by typing like minor would get you minor second, or you can actually go through and do minor third, etc., 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 for any of these. And then we're gonna hit return, 
Then we're going to hit Shift Enter to select it, and now we have entered the note. So let's do that in Keyboard Maestro. New action, we're going to choose this as Mouse Click, Mover Click Mouse. This will click the mouse uh, with the left button from the top of the Windows left hand corner. So from here, we're basically going to give it coordinates to go right there. These coordinates, you can figure it out on your own, but I'm just going to tell you it's 140 and 137. The easiest way to figure it out is by pretending to take a screenshot. So move your mouse up here, Command Shift 4, this is built in Mac functionality, and then just click and drag. And you can see the XY, it's about 144 and 137. And that's how I got that. Uh, then hit Escape to basically skip actually taking the screenshot. So now that we're here, we want to insert text by typing. Like here. And we want to type major second like that spelled out. And then we want to type in a keystroke. And this is going to be shift or turn. And so now, if you come back here, still the palette is open and hit 2. It selected major second. That's really cool. Now there's only one more problem with this. If mouse is over here before I hit 2, it now suddenly ends up over here. That's typically known as hijacking your mouse. And while this can be really useful in Keyboard Maestro, it can be really frustrating as a user because you remember your mouse being over here, and then suddenly it's not down here anymore, it's up here. The last two things we want to do is we actually at the very beginning want to save the mouse position, and then at the very end, move the mouse back to where it started. So we can get back here to Keyboard Maestro, there's another function called variables. So we're going to set variable, and we want to set the variable to text, like that. Move this up to the top because it's the first thing we want to do. And we're going to call this variable mouse position. Now for the actual text here, it's a bit complicated, but we only have to type this once. It's going to be percent sign, calculate, like that, another percent sign, then in all caps, mouse x parentheses, percent sign comma, space, and then it's going to be the exact same string except for mouse Y. So I'm just going to copy, paste, and change mouse Y like that. So now we've saved the position of the mouse, which means at the very end we can use the variable. So we come up here to find and use variable, double click this, it adds this. We could do to the end and make sure it says use variable mouse position to set the mouse location. And so now if our mouse is like over down here in the lower left hand corner, hit 2, it moves back there at the end. And you can actually see how fast this is by just looking at how fast the mouse is flashing. The rest of it is literally just a delay from Finale's user interface. But you can go as fast as you want. So I can go like that, select the notes or up and down. Even though it looks slow, you can go as fast as you can think. So cool, now that we are able to select major second, let's see if we can add the rest of the intervals. So duplicate this. We're going to change this to minor second, like that. I use shift 2 in general for these. It's going to be the normal hotkey for the major and then shift for the minor or tritone. And we here we want to put minor second. And it should work if we check it out. 2 is major second and shift 2 is minor second. So cool, we know it works and we can just start duplicating away. Major third gets us 3 over here. Major third, remember all spelled out. Duplicate minor third, shift three, over here, minor third. Then duplicate, we're going to do this as perfect fourth, and use four, and then perfect fourth like that. And then there are two types of tritones, so we're going to call this augmented fourth, like that. Shift four gets the augmented fourth for the tritone, augmented fourth like that. Then we have the perfect fifth, and I use five for this as well. And then down here, perfect fifth, like that, all spelled out. And then I use diminished fifth as well because like I said there are two types of tritones. So that we have diminished, five, shift five, diminished fifth, like that. And then if you wanted, you could keep going with six, seven, eight, nine up here. I personally, because I like all my keyboard shortcuts in the left hand, use W and Q for six and seven. So duplicate this, major six, W for me, 
Again, you can do six and seven if that makes more sense, but this is just what I do. Four major, six like that. Then we have a minor six. And again, that's shift W and it changes to minor. And then finally seven. So I use Q for this major seventh and down here, major seventh, all spelled out. And last but not least, minor seventh. And I use shift Q for that. So cool. We now can basically select any interval we want as quickly as we want. Go up or down, up or down, and you can do pretty much whatever you want. If you wanted to actually make these plus X octaves functional, you could always just change these keyboard shortcuts to whatever you want. Like maybe option one, two, three, four, five does the actual uh, changing the interval. I rarely use this plus X octaves, but you can do that if you want. Now there are just two things we need to finish doing. First, we need to make sure that you can hit OK and it will actually transpose everything. Second thing, we need to be able to cancel this. And when we cancel it, we also want this window to close. We actually want this window to close in both scenarios, but first let's do OK. So new macro, and luckily this is fairly simple. And we're gonna call this one Enter because it's just, you know, normally hit and go, you hit Enter. We can do Enter like that. And what this is gonna do is then we wanna type a button, press a button, and OK. So now, if we have this and hit OK, it automatically does the transposition we wanted. But we also wanted to close this palette as well. So there is actually a special action here called hide macro group that we can use. And then over here in the macro group, we select the one that we currently are using. So hide macro group intervals. And so now, if we were to transpose it and hit enter to transpose it, it also hides the macro group. Pretty cool. Two more things just to make this a little bit more elegant. After this, I always like to update the layout. So keystroke, command U to update the layout. Just sometimes for me, it doesn't update right away. Just do it automatically. And I also like to add a second hotkey trigger to this, F, F for finish. That way, again, I can do this all with one hand. I don't need my left hand to finish it. I could just do F. And then for closing it, we're gonna do something very similar. Command D, just to copy it. And finally, close. Delete the second hockey. Or instead of enter, we want to escape just to close it. Instead of hit OK, we want to press the button cancel. And we don't need to update the layout. So cool, then we can do Control W to open up the palette, C to open up the transpose tool, go up or down we want, any interval we want, preserve notes or not, and hit F to close or escape to cancel. And that's really cool because for reference, we'd have to go literally about this speed and I'm gonna do diminished third and do all these functions. And that's so much slower than changing these tools like that down, so much slower than that. And if you weren't talking and you really were in the flow, I bet you could go even faster than I just did. And best of all, you're probably doing this when you're doing no entry. And so because all the keyboard shortcuts can be done in the left hand, and you really don't need a mouse aside from the initial selection, you can keep your right hand either on the mouse or on the MIDI keyboard. That way you can keep entering notes as fast as you possibly can. And that's really neat and helpful. So in the next lesson, we're gonna continue this thread of working with different types of intervals and create a series of macros that will basically help make things that you already do even faster. Can't wait to do it, and I will see you in the next lesson.